Hi guys, it's David James from Business Growth Digital Marketing and in today's show, I'm graced with the presence of Richard Lowe Jr., who is the founder of The Writing King, best-selling author, ghostwriter, blogger and copywriter, all the way from Florida in the US of A. I want to welcome him to the show. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Ah, excellent. So, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've been doing and how you got into the SEO space? Well, it's an interesting story and I'll try and keep it as brief as I can. Um, I started in 1981 and I started at a, a computer company direct from college. In fact, I was hired out of college to become VP of that company, a vice president of consulting. And at that point in time, there was no internet. There was the ARPANET. Okay. And I actually worked on the ARPANET and actually worked on computers on the ARPANET and I did some work for the ARPANET on the, the networking side. Okay. And that company went, went under and I went to another company, became VP of consulting, and then another one became uh, worked on the Las Vegas Valley Water District's um, system mm -hmm. to pump water and things like that and then wound up at Trader Joe's as their IT director. And... Finally, after 20 years at Trader Joe's, I said, you know what, I can, I can make a living. I've got some, some money in the bank, so I'm going to just st stop working at Trader Joe's and, and become a writer, a professional writer. So I left Trader Joe's, moved to Florida because it was far away from California as I could get, <laughs> and decided to start writing. And that was in October 2013. And I haven't looked back. And in that time, I've written and published 63 books. I'm not all under my own name. I have ghostwritten 12 books, and I've published several hundred blog articles. And when I realized very quickly that in order to sell books and in order to sell my products, which I'm a consultant, so I sell products, my, my services, you have to learn SEO. Yeah. Because if you don't, nobody's going to find you. Okay. And, and it, I kind of liken it to your if you're out there on the internet advertising your products, it's kind of like trying to make your, your snowflake in the middle of a blizzard. How are you going to be found? Well, you need to turn the snowflake red or something like that so that it's obvious. Yeah. And that was how I got into SEO. That was a couple of years ago. And it, it changes very rapidly. Mm -hmm. But there's one, there's a couple of constants to SEO, which we'll get into in the interview, that are always true regardless of what the current algorithm is or wh whether it's penguin or um, iced tea or yeah. vanilla toast whatever the <laughs> update is <laughs> there, there's a couple constants that are always true and and it's good to focus on those constants and not worry about all of the tech technical stuff yeah unless you have a lot of money to spend mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like uh, 63 books uh, it, like that bedazzles me uh, I've uh, I wrote and published my first uh, like SEO ebook uh, this year, and that one took uh -huh. me three months. Oh, well, yeah, about three months to write. Uh, my wife, uh, she wrote and published her first uh, book about Afro hair maintenance, and that one took five mm -hmm. months. Uh, Sixty-three books. How did you do it? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I'm a very fast writer. I can write sometimes when I'm when I'm motivated. I can write ten thousand words a day. Wow. And since most books that I write tend to go into the niche of uh, short nonfiction, they tend to be between 15 and 25,000 words. Okay. So I can actually write and produce a book in a week and have it published and online and ready to go. Of course, you know, there's promotion and stuff that goes behind that after that yep. or before that. Um, so that's I write fast, and I have yeah. a lot of subjects that I'm very knowledgeable about, and I just decided to write things. And then, of course, I ran into some fads that we all run into. Some of those are coloring books, mm -hmm. puzzle books, things like that, because those were the hot item at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, I learned that hot items are ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> just to, you know, don't don't pay money for anything like that. Yeah, ever. You know, attend the webinar, learn what you can, and get out. Mm -hmm. That's my advice. And my, <laughs> some of my, my affiliate friends will probably hate that, but it's true. I mean, most of there's some good affiliate stuff out there, but yeah. the stuff that all says make, um, you know, uh, uh, 3D puzzle books and you'll make a fortune. Yeah. No, you won't. 
you know, <laughs> <laughs> because everybody else is doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And there'll be, ten, there'll be 100,000 of them. I got into coloring books, and I have 15 of them, and there are literally hundreds of thousands of coloring books on Amazon that I'm competing with. Yeah. And that's hard, it's hard to compete. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, I publish a lot of books. Yeah. And, of course, there's blogs and articles and copy and all the freelance work I've done on top of that just to – and. LinkedIn profiles, I'll start LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. I've been busy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, something I've been talking a lot with like, other SEOs and other clients is the importance of uh, being able to write and being able to publish. Uh, so, like, if you want to get yourself out there and if you want to, like, attract links naturally, if you want to get exposure naturally and to build uh, your online brand, that like, you have to be able to publish and that there's a couple ways you can publish. Uh, one is video, one is through audio, and then the other is through writing. But at the essence of everything, it comes back to writing. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on like the importance of writing or publish. Sorry, yeah, the importance of writing yeah, to try to develop uh, a successful SEO campaign. Well. Writing is extremely important because, well, actually, having good content is extremely important. Yep. And it's not just good content. It is excellent content. Your content yep. has to be above everybody else as much as you can do. Yep. Um, you need to have multimedia. You already uh, SEO people already know this. Um, Google owns YouTube. Yep. You've got to have some videos on your website. Yep. You've got to be well-done videos. Mm -hmm. You've got to have graphics with all of the appropriate tags and things. Yes. And you've got to have good writing. Yes. And broke, broken up into nice usable chunks, you know, long or short articles. There's it, people go back and SEO experts go back and forth. Do, do you want a 300 word article? Do you want a 2000 word article? I do mm. both yeah. because I figure I do what's good for my audience. And I'm not, I'm not, I want my audience to stay, read my articles, decide I'm a good writer, and then buy my services. Yep. Yeah. So I don't put junk articles there just to fill space and attract search engines. That's, yep. that's a side effect for me. Yes. I want people to read my articles and buy my stuff. Yeah, exactly. Or do whatever I want them to do from reading my articles. If yeah. you don't have good quality writing out there or mm -hmm. videos or whatever, mm -hmm. well, actually, it should be end videos. You should have both. Then your SEO is most likely going to fail in the longer term. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can do all of the fad things in little black hat and gray hat. And you can get some people coming to your site on the short term. Yeah. But you're gonna be you're gonna be fighting Google or Bing or whatever the whole step of the way. Focus on good content. Mm -hmm. Make sure your site is optimized for SEO. Grab one of the good plugins. There's a couple of them. I use Yoast, mm -hmm. but there's there's a couple others to optimize your site and focus on the content. Yeah. And and read about how to make the content SEO friendly. Yeah. And SEO attracting. Without going the wrong direction and being SEO, what are you trying to do? Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to scam me, aren't you? And you'll do fine. And then it doesn't matter what update it is because the content is the key. Yeah. And there used to be a saying, I don't know if it's still there, content is king. And there's nothing more true than that. Yeah. But it's, it, it's, you really should say excellent content is king. Yeah. That's the key to SEO is excellent, incredible content that is so good that people want to share it, come back. Again and again and again, yeah. And that's the that's the way you do SEO. Yeah, actually, I just want to expand on that last point because, you know, like I deal with a lot of like clients or ex clients or like previous projects, and like they just do content for the sake of doing uh, content, or, or they don't want to invest everything wholeheartedly uh, into it. So, like, what kind of difference do you find when you produce those excellent pieces of content? Like, how much easier do you and it makes your your campaigns run. Well, what it means is is that people stay on my page. Yeah. So if you've got if you've got mediocre content, you go to and I, I love Fiverr.com and I love it's a great site for getting inexpensive things sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if let's say you go to Fiverr.com and you find somebody who writes you a 300 word blog article and you get it for 20 bucks mm -hmm. or even less, you get what you pay for and people. Your normal person's going to come, read that, and say, eh, and they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. and they're never coming back. They're not yeah. going to share it. They're, they're not going to buy it. They're not going to get into your list. Mm -hmm. And you're, if your list contains similar content, they're going to get off of your list, mm -hmm. or worse yet, report for spamming. Yep. Now, compare that to good content, 
mm -hmm. good original content that you've put together or outsourced to a reputable outsourcer like me, <laughs> yeah. um, then you will have people who go, oh, this is pretty good. And they'll keep reading and they'll keep reading and they'll say, I wonder if Richard has any other content. They'll look at some other pages. So you're getting sticky now. Yeah. They, I got little tweet, tweet things in there to tweet it out and post to LinkedIn and you know the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'll start finding that stuff shared and, and then you'll start finding the search engines noticing and going, hmm. Because, of course, you have Google Analytics there, so Google knows exactly what you're doing or what they're mm -hmm. doing. And it's going, well, people are staying here, and they're looking at pages, and they're reading the whole article. They're reading all the way to the end or halfway through, mm -hmm. and they're signing up for his newsletter. There must be something to this guy. Mm -hmm. And they'll traffic your way. Now, of course, you got to pick the right keywords and phrases. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole art to that. I, I, it's called LSI keywords. I'm sure yeah. you know what that is. You, you got to make sure you've got related things that's all part of good content yeah you include those in there and you put them in there so they're not obvious mm -hmm. if it's obvious your audience is going to go oh, he's trying to scan the search engines unconsciously yeah. at least and they're going to leave mm -hmm. but that's what the difference between bad content and good content is and mediocre content is bad content yeah and good content is bad content you need to have excellent content uh, i like what you said before yeah, you said uh it's important to make your content sticky and this is something that I think a lot of people haven't really grasped yet. Because there is, like, you can produce good content, but like, good content doesn't always mean sticky content. Uh, that's why you need the excellent content. Well, you need excellent content that, but you also need to understand who your audience is. Yes. So if your audience is, my audience is entrepreneur, small entrepreneurs, you know, solopreneurs or small businesses that want to brand themselves on, on virtually or locally yeah. in, in a certain way. So by understanding that that's my audience, I'm attracting solopreneurs. I'm attracting a small business um, who has some money to spend to, mm -hmm. to brand themselves with the book, yeah. to write a book, which I ghostwrite, or get their LinkedIn profile looking good or having a good blog. Yeah. Okay, now what kind of articles would they like? Yep. So my content has to be tailored for that audience. Yeah. And that's part of making excellent content. It's not tailored for other audiences and it's not general. It's very specific. Mm -hmm. And of course I have other content too, because I have several audiences. That's just one of them. Yeah. Um so excellent content doesn't just mean well written and it doesn't mean it just mean good keywords. It means it's targeted toward your audience and re and reinforces your brand. Yep. If your brand is an SEO ex expert and that's what you're putting yourself out as, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, who's your audience? Well, you're probably selling it to small businesses for their web websites, let's just say. Yeah. Well, how are you, how are you going to get that out there? How are you going to mm -hmm. convince them that you're the expert? Mm -hmm. So your articles should be building your credibility. Yeah, exactly. And when they do that, you start getting clients. And sometimes, you, you know, I'll, I'll get three or four contacts a day off my website and they're actually qualified leads mm -hmm. with that turn into money. I mean, that's three or four money-making contents contacts every single day. I'm going to get dozens and dozens and dozens of contents, but three or four that are money-making ones every single day Yeah, that I, I look at and go, whoa, this one, I don't want this one, you know. And, yeah. and they're targeted. Yeah, they, they're how, What's it cost to write a book? I get those kind of questions, you know, how do I write a book? Yep. Can you help me with this? Can you write a blog for me? I've succeeded. Mm -hmm. I've narrowed down my audience so I don't get all this stupid stuff. Yeah. Stuff by that I mean stuff that's not related to what I want. Yeah. And they're they're actually reading it. Yeah. yeah like that's the Back to you. Yeah, yeah, that's the real value I find with uh content marketing. And uh I'm not sure how it's like in the States, but I feel like in Australia it's still something that's a bit behind. Not everybody's clocked onto it. Uh, and in my experience, I've worked mainly with like US-based clients or uh, European-based clients. I feel like they're a few steps ahead, uh, and with the exception of the affiliate marketers here uh, and the people who are entrepreneurs, the like local business scene, they don't quite grasp the value of content marketing uh, at this stage uh, because they're also looking for the quick wins and you know patience is needed. Uh, because I found, uh, well, there was actually one blogger I stumbled across. Uh, I wanted to like travel around Australia in a camper van. So I was there like, doing some research, stumbled upon this blog. This guy, 
Uh, he's not an internet marketing expert at all. And I started reading his content and it had every detail about his family's trip uh, going around Australia for a year. Like down, uh, excellent detail down to what to carry, how much it would cost, uh, what you needed to budget for day by day, what routes to, to take. And uh, I looked at his content and I'm like, man, this is amazing. I, I bookmarked it, and then I think I ended up signing up to his newsletter, even though I don't think he uh, shares the newsletter that often. And I just thought to myself, man, like this is the sticky content that we need in campaigns. So uh, then I started mm -hmm. taking that model and then applying it to different websites. And I did it on a trial website, and the model worked. Uh, and it just goes back to what you were saying about the sticky content uh, before and the need to write excellent content and not mediocre content. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It needs to be uh, excellent content aimed at your niche yeah. or your or genre or whatever you're doing that reinforces your brand and gives you credibility. Those are all important things. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been some one of the things I've been doing because my blogs evolved over the years is I've been going through and deleting articles that don't do that. Yeah. Because, you know, I started out just like everybody did and they read some of them and go, oh, that needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and I've deleted quite a few and deleted actually whole blogs because I had several blogs and just the whole blog gone because I mean, it didn't serve any purpose. Yeah. And it just dilutes my brand. Yeah. And it, it's important also not to do anything that's not white hat. Stay white hat. Yeah. And you'll be fine. If you, if you start venturing into gray or black, yeah, you're going to run into trouble and you're going to find yourself. I used to be a writer for uh, Sweet 101. Okay. They even got published in one of their books and they got hit by Penguin. And they were out of business within a month, I think, a month or two. Wow. Because everything was tailored around what, whatever the algorithms were at that time. And as soon as it changed, they were done. Yeah. And um, you don't do that. Just put out good content and it, the, it'll work. Yeah. Of course, you got to make sure you're doing all the other stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I find that a lot of people try to take shortcuts. Uh, like I even met uh, an another SEO buddy of mine who deals in one of the Fifty Shades of Grey in SEO, and yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. So I was talking to him about you know producing good content, you know, and making that scalable. Uh, but uh, he was still <clears throat> trying to find the shortcuts. He's like, yeah, there's this software that uh, can actually just transcribe the videos. You know that you just mm -hmm. find on YouTube, and then, uh, and then, yeah, you can kind of not get caught by the search engines. I'm like, well, like you could just write the content yourself or hire an expert copywriter. <laughs> you know, and well, yeah. actually, if just to just to address that point, if you yeah. go to YouTube and you go edit the video, yeah. it transcribes it for you automatically. Yeah. So you don't think that Google's not comparing transcriptions to text? Yes, yeah. they are, and that that person will get caught. Yeah. He will get caught, and and of course you can transcribe your own videos. You mm -hmm. should do that because you want them in video and text. That's the great thing to do. Yeah. But don't go stealing other people's videos and transcribe them. Yeah. That's. That, yeah, I know. You're gonna get caught. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So uh, another thing I wanted to ask you was, uh, what kind of impact have you seen uh, with yourself publishing good content and being able to attract those like good quality natural links, or even getting opportunities to. I guess blog, blog post on other sites or to share your content with other sites that like, get you links and then boost your <clears throat> SEO presence? Well, one of the things, it's not really SEO, but one of the things that helps is because I'm an author and I have so many books, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get caught somebody, say a reporter, yeah, because um, I'm on some reporter lists and uh, help a reporter out is one of them. Help a reporter mm -hmm. com, I think it's called. Yep. And They'll ask what my credibility is, and I'll say, well, I wrote a book on that, Yeah. like computer security. I'm a computer security expert. So yeah. I wrote a book on computer security. Oh, really? Yeah. And suddenly, I'll be, I'll be, they'll have an article with my name in it and a link. Yeah. Helpreporterout.com, by the way, is a great way to get natural backlinks, and it's, it's a slow process. It takes a yeah. lot of work. It's hard to outsource mm -hmm. because it requires ex, its expertise, yeah. but... Once you get started and you do a few of those a week, you'll find over time you're getting – I'm getting a good solid 20 to 30 backlinks a month in That's places like awesome. Inc.com and you know AccuWeather.com and things like that. that I mean real websites. Yes. And sure, I mean, I've got a long way to go before my site gets high up in Alexa and mm -hmm. ranks and things. But 
I'm still getting traffic that I want because on, on those business websites, they're sending me people clicking on them who actually want to buy my products. So this, the, actually the SEO becomes almost irrelevant. The yeah. links are sending me qualified clients. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, like this is uh, like 20, so you said 20 links a month from Haro? Uh, approximately? It looks like I'm getting about 20 backlinks a month on Haro. Wow, that's that's really impressive. Because uh, we no, use... I don't, I, don't nec- I don't necessarily see them in reports. I just see them, I, they send me where they put them and there yeah. they are. And it's like, okay. Yeah, because we get probably between 4 to 10 per month uh, through Haro and through, uh, there's another one called Source Bottle. Uh, and then we're just yeah. yeah, and we're also looking for uh, like other opportunities as well. Uh, but uh, I've, uh, you're the first person I've come across who's been able to get it at that scale. So, uh, like one of the reasons you probably get that is because of your author profile and how you have built up your own personal brand and persona. And this is what I also try to relay to clients uh, that if you want to get into those types of publications, you need to be able to uh, give the uh, give the journalist a story or help them out with their story, you know, and you have to have the credibility or the expertise to showcase that. I'm actually going to write a blog post on how to succeed at Haro oh. to help a reporter out. Yeah. And when you do a pitch, it's called a pitch when you yeah. send them to reporters, you have to, in just a couple paragraphs, you have to tell them why you're credible and answer their question. Yeah. And that's all you do and give them a link. Yeah. Or an email address or whatever. But why are you credible? Well, I wrote a book on computer security. Okay, good. What's the answer to my question? You know, what, what, talk about the ransomware that's going around. And then yeah. I answer their question in a couple sentences. If they want more information, they'll let me know. Yeah. So it's quick. It's fast. It takes me two, three minutes. I mean, it, it, it's maybe five minutes. And the key point is the credibility. Yes. And, and that, that's important. And then the other key point is specifically answer their question yeah that's what they want so don't just throw out um you know i'm an seo expert and and well so everybody's an seo expert well you know what's your credibility yep i wrote a book on seo i write blog articles on seo or you know my website's ranked higher whatever your credibility is i have a podcast in australia whatever Mm -hmm. your credibility is that's what you you cite in Haro, and that gets their attention. Yeah, because you, now you're an influencer. Now you have some, now you have name. Yeah, and it's not that hard to make a name. Uh, no, you've made not. one with by having a podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, like uh, everybody starts from zero. This is another thing that a lot of people don't understand. So everybody starts from zero, and then you have to build your audience. So all those people that you see who have a like, hundred thousand, like, you know, a million, you know, ten million people following they all started from zero uh, and you need to be able to understand your audience uh, give your audience like, what they want and then scale that audience's growth you know and you know there's some niches where you can scale it a lot more and there's others where uh, it's a lot slower uh, the stuff that uh, myself uh, and my wife uh, go in uh, it varies so uh, like in in the SEO niche, uh, it's been slower to grow the audience, but then we've done something that's a bit in the human niche, and then that one just, like, uh, the audience just grows very quickly there, you know, and then my wife does uh, something in Afro hair, and that one is just a very rapidly growing niche, yeah, she just, mm-hmm. yeah, so, yeah, everything comes down to the audience. Yeah, the SEO niche is, is hard to sell because... It it people. Uh, I'm an SEO expert. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so what? Yeah. What's the what's the problem you're trying to solve? And the SEO experts go in saying they're an SEO expert. And they're not format. They're not focused on the problem. Yeah. That they're trying to solve for customers. Yeah. What I solve in my in my niche, which is branding, is mm. to make these people credible so they build their business. Yeah. So I I you have to format that. that that's a benefit. Yeah. Um. And then I have to target that into what problem are they? Am I trying to solve? And then focus my advertising on that. Yeah. SEO, it's it's hard to sell. First of all, it's expensive. Yeah. It, it's very expensive. Yes, it SEO, is. SEO, if it's cheap, if it's cheap, it's probably a scam. Yeah. Excuse me, it is a scam. Yeah. And you're probably going to get blacklisted if you, if you keep doing cheap stuff. It's going to yeah. be expensive. You're going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But 
And even if you pay for it, you're probably going to, if you don't do your homework, you might get ripped off. Yeah, exactly. It may have no effect. You have to be careful, and it's gotten kind of a little bit of a bad rep for that sometimes. Yeah. Or well, sometimes it's generous, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like any field. Yeah. Any field can do that. I'm sure that um, bankers got a bad rep from the banking collapse in 2008, you know, in, Cal in here in the States, you know? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, every uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, I'm kind of uh, wandering around. But... Uh, no, I was. Uh, I just wanted to go back to what you were saying with uh, helping clients with books to gain a visit. Uh, sorry, to gain visibility. Uh, there was a book I read mm -hmm. a few years ago uh, by uh, an Australian guy. His name is Daniel Priest, Priestley, and the mm -hmm. book uh, is called uh, "Becoming a Key Person of Influence." So, uh, one of the first step was to write a book, get published. Uh, he said, mm -hmm. if you want to be a, a business or an influencer that gets 90% of uh, the rewards in a field or in an industry or in a niche, uh, you, you have to uh, build up your persona uh, to be able to be a part of that 10% who gets the 90% of the rewards. Uh, and the main thing he was talking about was uh, getting published and getting, uh, uh, getting involved in networking. But in order to get involved mm -hmm. in networking, you had to get published first. And a lot of people, they just want to get the reward and they don't want to uh, do the foundation work. Uh, so like w with you uh, saying that you're helping companies uh, with uh, getting published uh, through an ebook, I think that's really important. And that's something I've been trying to get companies to do as well. Uh, we don't have the resources in-house to uh, dedicate someone uh, to write a book, but we know how important that is. So I just want to uh, yeah, get a bit more insight from what you've been doing with helping companies improve their brand uh, by publishing a book first and then allowing them to, you know, uh, yeah, to, to grow. Well, that's, that's one of my primary focuses is, is writing a book for somebody. I'm working on one now. Well, actually, I just, just, I'm about to get one published now. It's actually not a ghost written book. Mm -hmm. I, um, was the editor on the book and help and uh, kind of like a writing um, a writing consultant where I helped him learn helped him write his book. He's French. Yep. And it's called Digitize or Die, and it's oh, about nice. the Internet of Things. And he is a big name in the Internet of Things space mm -hmm. and where it's going and how many Internet of Things there are going to be. There's going to be billions and billions and billions of these things on the internet mm -hmm. in years, in just a matter of a couple of years. And it's it's a fascinating book, and he wrote it to brand himself as the expert in that space. Yeah, he also wants to sell it, of course, and he hopes to sell a lot of copies. But that's secondary. The main thing is, is he wrote it to let so that people know he's the expert. Yeah. He, even though he hasn't published it yet, he's already getting phone calls from people asking him for advice, asking him to speak, mm -hmm. asking him. It's exactly what you want to have happen. Yeah, exactly. He, and as he promotes it more and more, he's getting, he's getting more and more people trying to communicate with him. And that's the whole point. He's branded now as that. Mm -hmm. That's what he is. He's the Internet of Things expert. We'll work on his second book next. <laughs> yeah. Because you want a follow-on book. But that, that's the way it works. Yeah. And that's, it works. and that's what I, that's what I help them do. Yeah. And I found that there's no like, real shortcut. Uh, this is one of the challenges I find uh, when I talk about this with clients that uh, they they want to like take their business to the next level, uh, and they might be doing say uh, they might be a hundred thousand dollar a year business or a million dollar a year business, and then they want to try to become like the Apple in their industry, and I say to them if you want to do that you have to get published yeah you have to exactly. yeah yeah you have to publish your content, uh, and if you want to appear on things like television uh, if you want to get invited for interviews if you want to be on uh, radio, like, you have to be branded uh, as that go-to expert, you know, uh, whether it's your company or yourself as an individual. And the quickest way to do that is to, to publish a book. If you're not publishing a book, at least publish a blog. Yeah, but you're not going to get those opportunities uh, if you just try to take what you're doing just by working function, uh, sorry, working in your functional job every day, and then go to someone and say. Yeah, I want to. Uh, I want to be interviewed by you. You might be lucky, 
you know, but more often than not, you know, it's not really, yeah, the chances of. If you want, yeah. If you want to brand yourself and you want to make yourself into a big name, you have to do three things, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Number one, you make sure you have the perfect LinkedIn profile. Yeah. People look, if you're professional and I'm hiring you or I want to find out about you, I'm going to look on LinkedIn. Yeah. Number two, <clears throat> make sure you have a blog and that it is as professional as you can make it. And yeah. It portrays the, the image that you want to portray. Yeah. <clears throat> Communicates well good SEO, the whole thing, but have a blog because that's your home on the internet and yeah. everything should center on your blog. Why a blog is supposed to say Facebook. You don't own Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. Facebook can shut down your account in a moment's notice if they don't like you. I've had my account shut down for an hour or two because, you know, some hacker got in or yeah. some bot went crazy and yeah. it was scary because I've done a lot of work on Facebook and mm -hmm. it's like, but if you they, you blog unless you don't pay the bill or unless you're doing something really weird, your mm. blog's not going to get shut down. Yep. Um, the third thing you need is a book. And if you yep. do all three of those things, you have put in the foundation yep. to making yourself big. If you don't have those three things and they don't interconnect, mm -hmm. you don't have your foundation yet. You're, you're going on sand. Yep. I do all three of those things for people. That's, one of the, that's three of the things that I do and work them together. Yep. Now – once you have those mm -hmm. and you've got them as good as you can get them, then you work on the social media and building up your name on social media. Then you work on the press releases. Then you work on these other things. But you've got to have those three things, or at least in the works, and to really be a complete brand. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask you as well, uh, just going back to the writing, uh, I, I know how important it is to write and I know it's very challenging for like, a lot of people uh, to write. Uh, like myself, it, it took me probably almost two years. No, let's say about a year of just uh, writing articles constantly every day to be able to get the confidence to be able to start writing a book. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then uh, it took me, uh, let's say, three months to write a 20,000 word book. I was doing other things in between. But yeah, of course. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, it took me about three months. Uh, now, a lot of people, they'll say, oh, yeah, but I'm not a writer. Uh, I, I can't really write. I don't know what to write about. Uh, how do you think someone, uh, whether they've got experience writing or if they don't have any, any experience writing, can at least take some steps forward to, towards getting, uh, getting themselves published? Well, if if somebody doesn't want to write, the first thing they should do is call somebody like me. I'm a ghost writer, mm -hmm. and I'm also <clears throat> a book coach. Okay. Ghost writing, ghost writing can be fairly expensive. What ghost writing is is you hand me a pile of notes, we do some interviews, and I write your book and hand it back to you finished. Yep. We do some revisions, we're done. So I do all the work. Mm -hmm. But book coaching actually pushes most of the work back to you if okay. you were going to do your book, and you would – say write it as good as you can and it's it's obviously not going to be perfect yeah. maybe we do interviews maybe whatever and i'm helping you write your book yeah that is much less expensive i'm actually working on two of those now yeah. it's much less expensive because i'm really like a consultant that you're using to help you get your book done give yeah. you confidence make sure the english is good maybe rewrite some parts of it yeah maybe uh, do some interviews and we're working together as little or as much as you want and can afford yeah, and it can be as go as slow as fast as you want. But mm -hmm. if you start on that, if you hired me as a book coach, let's say you hired me yeah. as a book coach right now to start on your book, you could at least make progress every week. We would make sure you're doing progress every single week. You're writing something, yeah. and your book would get done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you'd be very happy with it. That's one way to do it. Yeah. The other way is say, Richard, I want to write a book about SEO. Go for it. Here's some money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it gets done, and I've done that too. Yeah, oh man, There's, you've been able to drop, uh, share a lot of uh, amazing, uh, amazing knowledge. Uh, oh yeah, I did have one uh, other last question, which is, what kind of, uh, what what kind of impact did you see uh, with your visibility after writing a book compared to doing other kind of things? Well, basically, before I wrote a book, let me take one of the books I wrote. It's called Focus on LinkedIn, and it's it's yeah. a it's the basic book. 
it goes over the basics of how to put together a LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. to make it visible and useful. So it's not an advanced book. It's it's would be for somebody who's new to LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Um, that got me a job at um, a LinkedIn company. Mm -hmm. Not related to LinkedIn, but they do LinkedIn profiles, and I've done over 150 of them now. And I talk to people about LinkedIn profiles all the time, and that basically made me a LinkedIn influencer and a LinkedIn expert. Yeah. I can point to that book and say, there it is. Mm -hmm. There's the information on how to do it. I wrote it, and I wrote it from my head, yep. and that's, that's stuff that I know that works. Yeah. This is the method that I use to make profiles. And it's got quite a few reviews on Amazon. Most of them are pretty good. It's yep. actually a bestseller. Oh, nice I think one! It's well sold done. Almost ten, almost ten thousand copies so far. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, that's my bestseller. That's a that was I was pretty proud of that. Oh, um, well I got done. another one, How to Sell on eBay, that establishes my credibility on eBay, and because I've made quite a bit of money off eBay, and I made the books um, became a bestseller also. Oh, congratulations! We're talking Amazon. Amazon bestseller, not New York Times bestseller. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different story. I'd like to be a New York Times bestseller. Yeah, but it, it made me a, a branding expert for LinkedIn. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it sounds so like nobody has to. It, it sounds like uh, like like when you publish, it creates an opportunity for success, and then it uh, can create a snowball effect, uh, and yeah, it just uh, keeps on making things get like bigger and. Like more success mm -hmm. and kind of makes you become a magnet for success. Well, it's a found, like I said, those three things a book, a blog, and a LinkedIn profile are what I see as the foundation. And if you've got a book, you're well along your way of having that foundation. And you, you have to use it, of course. If you just write a book and let it sit there, it's not doing nothing for you. Yeah. You have to use it to promote yourself. You, you send copies to people. You can send, I have them in paperback, hardcover, audio, and Kindle. Yeah. Um, formats, so you can get them in all the formats, which gives even more credibility. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I'm actually working on a course for LinkedIn so that people can take a LinkedIn course, uh, which will just be the book, but I'll explain it all in detail. Yeah. Um. So it's a, it's a foundation. You do have to then actually use you have to build a house on top of that. Yeah. So that would be your social media, that would be your press releases, that would be all your other promotional efforts, your products that go with it, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But without the foundation, you don't have the credibility. Yeah. But, and then, then it becomes much harder because then you're, you're – some people, the credibility is their bachelor's degree. Some people, it's their master's degree. Some people, it's that they have 20 years of experience in this industry. What a book does is it can boil all that down into words and in a short, concise way, and say, "This is my this is my credibility. Here's why I'm the expert." Yeah, and people go, "Yeah, he is the expert." Yeah, actually, I, I did have another quick question just off the back of that. Is what kind of impact have you also seen publishing a book have on the growth of your audience? Dramatic. Mm -hmm. It's it's dramatic, especially the, the LinkedIn books, the one I've been kind of promoting, and the audience for that has increased. I have to say dramatically. I, I don't have any numbers off the top of my head. Yeah. But it's definitely created. Um, it created a a niche for me to go after. Yeah. Because one of my problems has always been, as you can probably tell. I've got a lot of training in a lot of areas. I'm a computer guy, mm -hmm. I'm a LinkedIn guy, I'm an eBay guy. You know, I could go on and on and on. I'm, I'm a security person, so it focused me on that one thing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a LinkedIn expert, and now I can sell that. I'm a blogging expert. I got a book on blogging. Duh, yeah. Go figure. And, <laughs> and now I'm a blogging expert, and I've got, got a book. And I'm a ghostwriting expert, and those are my three niches. And I've got a book on each one, and it 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 creates a natural organic audience. Yes, it's very interesting. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. It creates an inflow. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Like you become a uh, a magnet, you know, and a magnet for success. Yeah. Like I, I'm doing public speaking in the local area, and I'm speaking at dozens of places. I've got scheduled for the next two months. I'm going to libraries and getting book signings. I'm going all over the place. And the whole reason for that is I'm going to be talking about LinkedIn ghostwriting or, 
or um, blogging, and I'll have my books there and give them to people. And they go, oh, well, let me go let me go to your website. You write a book? I've been wanting to write a book my whole life. Mm-hmm. Great. I can help you with that. Yeah. Most of them never get back to me. Some do. Yeah. And then on LinkedIn, what's this LinkedIn thing? Will it help me? Sure. Here's a book. Mm-hmm. I'll even sign it for you. 20 bucks. You know, I'll sign it for you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then they, they, they have the book and then they read it and then they go, oh, you know, this sounds good. And they call me back. First of all, they try and do it themselves. Yeah. Which is what the book tells them how to do. And then half the time they go, yeah, this is a lot of work. <laughs> they call me. Yeah, it, it, it is, is a lot of work. work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. Uh, but look, yeah. uh, look, I want to, I want to uh, say thank you for you know participating and just everything that you've shared uh, today in terms of like, SEO, in terms of content writing, in terms of personal branding, uh, branding for a company, uh, the importance of uh, publishing. It's just been amazing, and I know that we could go on for at least another hour, uh, but. You know, I really want to thank you for what you've been able to share uh, with the audience today. Uh, where's the best place for people to find you? They can go to thewritingking.com. So T-H-E, writingking.com. And that's my blog. And it has every way to get hold of me. It has, it has all my services, um, books listed, a couple, I think over 150 blog articles. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the best place to get hold of me. And then the second thing is go to cool author, C O O L C O O L author.com. That goes to my Amazon book page and that has all my books listed. Uh, awesome. Oh, well, look guys, you know where to find them. You know, I want to say thank you again, Richard, for being on the show. You know, make sure you follow my him. pleasure. Yeah. Make sure you follow him, you know, check out his books, a bestseller right here. And if you need any of his services, you know, definitely go and inquire and check him out. So thank you again. Thank you.